It's only been out for an hour. The final three episodes of Harry and Meghan's Netflix series have arrived with the couple, well, getting even more personal. The first morning that we woke up in our new home is when I miscarried. I believe my wife suffered a miscarriage because of what the male did. Royal editor Russell Myers is here. We've actually asked the male for a right to reply on this. They haven't got back to us as yet. They're probably digesting that. Um, that's some claim, isn't it? Well, I imagine they are, because that is an extraordinary allegation that, uh, you know, that a newspaper organisation was responsible for, for the death of their unborn child. And I imagine that um, people uh, at the male would, would, would want to respond to that. I mean, uh, of course, that uh, Meghan and Harry have had a fractious relationship with the press. Indeed, the male group that they taken to task indeed won a court case did, for yes. invasion uh, of, of their privacy and essentially that's what they'd said um, I mean these bo bombshells are extraordinary I mean the, the the first three episodes of the first half of this Netflix series really sort of warmed the public I think to them tried to sort of soften the atmosphere and uh, and nobody has um, has a uh, come off worse than the royal family themselves. I and mean, we were talking about William and uh, Harry having a pact to not go down the route of their father and their mother's torturous relationship. Uh, Harry saying that the palace were briefing against them, that they were doing things better, that they had set upset the apple cart from the right, from the off. Um, really, really breathtaking stuff. No, it absolutely is. Um, going back to the fact that she makes, uh, what well, Harry makes the claim about the miscarriage, what was that? Do we know the context of that? Well, I presume that there isn't any context within the, within the, right. uh, the, the the program. Again, we're sort of all digesting it now. But okay. uh, I think that uh, what they're referring to is the, uh, the the letter that Meghan had written her father. Oh, gosh, yes. There is an awful lot said about this, and yeah. essentially Meghan says that uh, the letter was potentially intercepted. Then it then was chapter and verse printed oh, yeah. in the newspaper, which has been the subject of a court uh, case that she did win in the High Court. Yeah. Again hugely, hugely contested that that court case was. Uh, again, a, a, a very sad situation. Oh, it's because terrible. It's her, the breakdown of her relationship with her father was, yeah, was yeah. again, well documented. Yeah. But uh, but she, it, it, it's a blame game here, I think, with Harry and Meghan. Everything was to do with the media being against them, the mm -hmm. palace being against them. And there's, there's, there's very little introspection here, I would say. Right. That's, my, that's my first okay. take on it. Um, and I think that, um, you know, once you, once you scratch the surface of this, that they would have been better off uh, having a, have a little bit of you know, foresight and a, mm. and a bit of... Um, I don't know, it's really interesting because, you know, um, Ross was on in Monday, mm, yes. Ross King, and he made the really good point of what is it they want, what's the end game, if you like, I hate mm. saying that phrase, but what is it they actually want to achieve by doing this and by writing the book and by... by, by putting it all out there. Well, one of the most interesting points I found was the fact that Harry said that they were planning Megxit, if you, I hate that term, but they were, right. they were planning their, their um, departure from the royal family for at least two years. Oh, wow. So the fact that they, wow. uh, that they left very, very, so, you know, within two years after getting married opens up a lot of questions. No, it really does. And I want to talk about that relationship with his brother and whether or not they can ever repair that later on. I know you're going to keep watching yes. and, and seeing what they say. It's just really sad. Very much so, yeah. You know, when you look at how the things that they could have done together and how successful it was, maybe I'm being naive thinking that everybody worked together. We'll talk about that yes. later on. Russell, first of all, um, she talks, she, and, and Megan talked about this with Oprah Winfrey as well, about her, her suicidal thoughts, about the fact that she wasn't able to get help. But for the first time, we see her mother talking about it. And her mum is really, understandably incredibly upset about it. And it's like people, you know, she wanted help and she wasn't able to get it. Well, it's incredibly powerful. I mean, yeah. I remember that speaking uh, with you after we'd seen the Oprah Winfrey oh, interview. Awesome. And, uh, and I thought that that was something that the palace really did have to get a grip of because this totally. was a, a young woman who was pregnant saying that she was feeling suicidal, yeah. abandoned by the royal family. And it's still, you know, it seems as though they, they haven't um, been able to, to, to sort that out between, mm. between them, and, and, and here we are. So the, the issue that uh, the, 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 this documentary has in its favour is um, Meghan's mum speaking and Doria yeah. being in tears, talking about how she received a call from Meghan pretty much at her wit's end, and then Harry saying as well, saying that uh, you know, he, he felt shame that he wasn't able to, yeah. to deal with it in the right way, that he was dealing with, with uh, the, sort of his institutionalised head-on as a, as a member of the royal family. It's, yeah. uh, it's a bit of a Mess, it really is, and it's such a shame. And did they not learn anything from Diana? Poor Diana had postnatal depression. She needed help, 
and she just was left to somehow flounder. But it's the fact that, oh, no, 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 you can't get help because that'll look bad. Mm, well, Actually, this that is... would look good. Well, precisely. That would look brilliant. In and today's would... yeah. day and age, I think you're totally right. That this, uh, Harry has been a huge mental health advocate, as has William exactly. and Kate all together. The issues that, uh, that are really resonate within this documentary is that there are constant references to Diana. Yeah. I think the, 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 the roles, certainly William, will have an issue with the fact that the Panorama documentary has been used in countless I times mean, again. Uh, and so, you know, uh, but I do think they, would, they were two different issues. And, but, but Harry constantly referencing his mother will strike a call with some and, uh, and possibly you know, be an issue for, for, for others. Now, here's the thing. They do talk about becoming the most popular members of the royal family. They were the newest, they were the shiniest, and they were doing a brilliant job. Let's listen. The issue is when someone who's marrying in, who should be a supporting, a supporting act, is then stealing the limelight or is doing the job better than the person who was born to do this. That upsets people, it shifts the balance. Because you've been led to believe that the only way that your charities can succeed and the only way that your reputation can be grown or improved is if you're on the front page, front pages of those newspapers. See, this was very but, sad because I didn't think that that was the thing. I thought they all work together for the common good, but you've got this thing of this one's briefing against this one, according to, to Harry, that they, and they'd made, as you said, they'd made a pact not to do that. Well, this is interesting as well, that yeah, Harry yeah. says essentially that him and his brother William had made a pact together when they were children or young men, that they'd seen the toxicity of, of the relationship between their father and their mother in both households briefing against each yeah, other. Right. I mean, it was an, an awful period that, mm. uh, indeed, from, from the media point of view and the family, That's certainly horrible. didn't want to mm. go back to. And he talks about his sadness and uh, about being distraught that he's, he, he believed that his brother's office was actively briefing against him. Now, again, we haven't seen any evidence of this. They've been talking about the fact right. that, you know, Meghan's lawyer said that <laughs> she'd seen evidence, um, you know, Harry and Meghan constantly referencing the fact that they were being... Uh, ne negative stories about them were being put in the press. But again, we haven't seen much evidence of it, apart from, apart from headlines that, uh, you know, that they have an issue with. Well, that's the thing. Now, tell me about um, the relationship now between the two brothers, because you know there was that infamous Sandringham summit and we get a little bit of an insight as to what actually happened there? Well, we do, and this is very interesting because the Sandringham Summit was uh, uh, about sort of um, sorting the deal for them to be able to leave the royal family. And right. Harry and Meghan wanted a half-in, half-out proposal, which was explained to them that they couldn't have. Now, this is potentially one of the most explosive claims that Harry says, you know, can you imagine what it was like for me having my brother scream in my face while my father was basically telling me I had to leave the family and my grandmother, the Queen, just sitting back and taking it all in? Mm. Now, the, the royals would sort of ha have everybody believe that it was all sorted out very cordially, yes. but we now obviously know with the fact that they've been speaking to Oprah and now this, that it was anything but. I mean, again, such a, a, a huge issue to put forward for, for Harry and a really pointed attack. But again, we, we, one must be objective about this and look at the fact that he has already admitted in this documentary that both he and Meghan were looking to, to leave for, for more than two years. So yes. right up after the wedding, which was paid for by taxpayers' money, £32 million, they wanted out. And I think that most people will have a bit of an issue with that. And they do talk about planning the whole sort of, as you said, the whole sort of Mexit thing. And she does talk about being sidelined. But listen to them, the, what she said about Mexit. By the time that I was speaking to my father from Canada, the family and their people knew that we were trying to find a different way of working for a minimum of two years. Minimum. That's extraordinary, mm. isn't it? Mm. I didn't think it was... I mean, I, I've, I've always thought I mean, that he'd wanted out and he's always wanted out, even when he was teeny tiny. I think he just had, had enough the wee soul. Um, Megan talks about being sidelined, though, doesn't she? And it's such a shame because the first bit of the, what I've seen, you know, the first episode, the things that she was doing, you know, going to Grenfell and doing that recipe book and you saw the reaction of the crowds and everybody loved it. And what they're saying is everybody loved it apart from the other members of the royal family who were like, hang on a minute, we're getting 
you know, they're getting too much attention. Well, again, it's crazy. That's a, yeah, I mean, this is interesting of their view because Harry says that we were doing it better, essentially, yes. that they were coming in, upsetting the, the, the way that things had been in the, uh, in the past and uh, that they were the, the new rock stars of the royal family. And, of course, they were. Everybody uh, was very interested to see how they would work together, how they would work together within the, the new royal foundation with William and Kate. And yet um, headlines are being used to say that Meghan was getting more attention, the women are basically paired off against each other by Harry and Meghan. And, uh, you know, I think a, a bit of um, introspection here okay. that there was a huge groundswell of public support for them. Totally. Again, it was not this only was the, the public and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the media as well. And um, I think that's very telling that the fact that they said they were planning it for two, you know, at least two years because... Mm. Um, so they never know, really wanted to stay? Well, that's, and, that, that's yeah, the big question, isn't I it? I know. Well, look, let's go to Courtney because Courtney... What's been the reaction to the documentary so far in America? Is it been, has it had the same sort of attention and reaction as it has over here? You know, I think it doesn't have the exact same reaction. A lot of Americans are on the fence about this. On one hand, we are seeing Harry and Meghan as a novelty where we want to know about their unique love story, their family life, and what ultimately led them to step down from their royal duties. But on the other hand, we're kind of feeling the same way that some there's some hypocrisy happening where you're putting out a documentary for profit. So a lot of people are just trying to understand Harry and Meghan's truth that they continue to speak about here. So there's a lot of covers and magazines that have been coming out, Lorraine, that I'm sure you have seen at this point. Uh, so we're just really trying to get to the bottom of this like everyone else. So that's been the reaction. We're on the fence. On the fence, yeah, I guess. I mean, people here, it tends to be much more polarised. I, I, I think that that's certainly the, the way of it. And you mentioned magazine covers. I mean, that was really yeah. interesting what Harry said, is that they kind of measure their popularity by whether or not they're on the front of... Um, not necessarily them, I mean, like, the, the, the royal insiders, whoever they may be. Um, you know, they kind of measure it there. And, and the ones that are coming out now, they're on the front pages, but not dominating the front pages. Absolutely. So People Magazine is releasing their cover on December 26th, talking about no holding back. You've got Us Weekly claiming that Harry's attacking the royal family by calling it a dirty game. And then Life and Style went as far to say that the couple spoiled Christmas. Now, I wouldn't say that a lot of Americans agree with that, uh, but we do understand that there is a lot that has led to this. So uh, when it comes to the documentary, there are some things that we feel have been said in poor taste. So when they're talking about Nottingham and and how it's small, or even Megan speaking on being white passing and her privilege at some point and how she didn't experience racism until she was with Prince Harry, uh, it's leaving a bad taste in people's mouths. So again, we're trying to hear their truth, trying to hear their sides of things, but a lot of people right now are just, we, we've heard this at this point, we're a little bit bored. We heard their Oprah interview and a lot of things right now seem to be um, hypocritical is what a lot of people feel. Do you know, it's interesting, Courtney, there hasn't really been, as far as I understand, any public comment from Hollywood friends, if you like, you know, the Clooney's, Oprah Winfrey, nobody's really yeah. saying anything. Now, is that because they, they don't want to or they don't want to get dragged into this sort of family feud, do you think, or, or because they just want to distance themselves? You know, with the Cloonies, with Oprah Winfrey, with Gail King, these are people who attended the royal family. So obviously they support this couple, they support their love, but at the same time, everyone has their own lives and no one wants to get dragged into drama. And so I think that's why you're seeing a lot of A-list celebs are staying quiet. That doesn't mean that they don't fully support them. We obviously saw Serena Williams. She is in the documentary speaking on the wedding only. And also she's been on Megan's podcast. So her friends are in support in their own way, but you get to a certain age and and you are not going to inject yourself into drama. So I think that's what we're seeing over here across the pond with our A-list celebs. Well, thank you, Courtney, for the moment. Thank you so much. And Russell, this is out now. Everybody will be talking about it for a couple of days. Then it's Christmas and we get on with that. But then the book comes out. Surely that's it. And where do they go from here? Well, I don't think it will be because, you Seriously? know, the book is coming out. Oh. Uh, we revealed during the week that Harry's in talks with senior uh, TV executives in the States about doing a round of TV interviews to publicise the book. We don't know what will come out. I mean, this is pretty 
bombshell stuff. I mean, the, the, the first half of the series was the, the you know, the aperitif to the, the main yeah. meal. So, uh, yeah, where do we go? Uh, there's certainly no way back for, for them to. I mean, there was discussions about whether they would sort of put an olive branch out to the rest of the family. I can't imagine the family will, won't have anything to do with them. In the, do you think uh, they'll the see anything, in... the palace? Do you think they'll see... The palace? We talk about the palace. Yeah. The people. <laughs> do you think that his brother will see anything? Do you think that uh, that's I, like I his dad? I don't think so. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a very, very personal attack. Um, you know, nobody mm. has come off of this smelling of roses at all, and mm. uh, least of all the royals or Harry and Meghan, sadly. It's really interesting, because um, Harry talks about how uh, King Charles um, warned him about basically taking on the press. This is what he had to say. So do we still believe that she should have just sucked it up like other members of the family? Or does one think that maybe it's about time that we stop? But no one would have private conversations with the editors saying, enough. My dad said to me, darling boy, you can't take on the media. The media will always be the media. And I said, I fundamentally disagree. See, that's so interesting. And it's this weird relationship, isn't it? They need the media and the media need them, mm. kind of. So how it's how you square that, isn't it? How do you square that, sir? It is, and really again, this is a tale as old as time, isn't it? You know, the Royals' relationship with with the media, and for some, it uh, it seems to work fairly well. I mean, you know, I think that uh, Harry and Meghan had this. Uh, their mo was always that they wanted to leave. We know that now. They were potentially looking for ways in which they could blame other people for their uh, their own misgivings. And so, mm. um, listen, we are where we are, and uh, and I think um, just a, a pretty sad situation and um, I don't think we've heard the last of it. No, there is, there is an irony in the fact that, they, that if he does do these interviews, he's using the media to attack the media. Of course, and, and for huge profit. Let's not forget yeah, this. I mean, you know, that's what people might have an issue with. Yeah, exactly. Well, let us know what you think, um, especially once you've seen it and you've thought about it. And I just hope, write the book, then get on with your lives. I keep saying this, to amazing kids, yeah. to healthy, happy kids, the most beautiful house I've ever seen. Exactly. Well, I've only seen wee bits of it that they've shown us. Um, and yeah, and Count you can do amazing things. things. Yeah. Do amazing things, incredible things.